Ever since they kicked us out of their country, Britain has enjoyed a famously special relationship with the USA. Welcome to America! <laughs> Put the crackers, to be honest, but... Hey ho. We've embraced each other's culture. Right, sure. That's a fool. Supported each other's foreign policies. And scoffed each other's cuisine. But do we actually speak the same language? Hey, refill all careful mode, huh? Hello. In this series, families from across the UK and America will swap lives for a week. This is never ending, this. No, it's not. That's part of it. And discover what really goes on in their twin towns. There comes a time when you got to raise the black flag and you start slitting throats. Today's that day. Welcome to Chicago. The Windy City is the third largest in the USA, and it's got the well-endowed CV to match. The birthplace of the skyscraper, it stands on the shores of Lake Michigan and boasts the two tallest buildings in America. Four major league sports teams, several top universities, world-class theaters, museums and galleries, its own cuisine and the Owen family. Maria, Othell Jr. and Othell Sr. who believes in upholding traditional family values. My job is to bring home the bacon. Her job is to slice it up and prepare it any and every way she can. <laughs> and she spends the money very well. I couldn't have asked for a better steward of my finances than my wife. In order to bring home the bacon, Ethel Senior works three community-focused jobs, offering small business advice to Chicago's disadvantaged residents. The families that I work with are going through tremendous turmoil. I'm here to serve and service in the way of family, service in the way of community. I'm doing God's will. Maria also has her hands full, running an online fashion accessories business and managing Othell Jr.'s acting career. He's appeared in short films and commercials and thankfully is a better actor than he is basketball player. She cuts the side. Uh -huh. She cuts the back a little. Mm -hmm. She takes a little off the top, but just a little. Like many Americans, the Owens have a somewhat romantic view of the UK. When I think of the, um, the UK, the first thing I think of is the Queen, of course. I think of the fabulous 16-ounce pints. <laughs> Here in the United States, we have a 12-ounce, so I'm looking forward to a 16-ounce pint of ale. But Othello and Maria also have a more serious motive for visiting their twin town. We support diversity, support in, in the multicultural background, Chicago is a segregated city. It's got pockets. I don't like that about Chicago. And we want to expose him to every ethnicity on this planet as, as we can. The Owens are heading to the right place. Chicago's twin town, Birmingham, is one of the most culturally diverse in the UK. And even though the Queen doesn't live here, there are plenty of quintessentially British crown jewels for visitors to admire. The Stevenson family have lived in the West Midlands all their lives, although Greg and Vicky never made it beyond the 1980s. They run and perform in a theatre company paying tribute to the decade that understatement forgot. We produced everything that we do, we choreograph everything that we do, we uh, cast, direct. cast and direct. Everything. It's just us two. You name it, we do it. <laughs> We dress up stupid in silly costumes. We do. Cindy Lauper, Madonna, Adam Ant, you play with a white stripe. Greg and Vicky may be living the retro dream, but their unsociable working hours leave little room in their lives for friends and family. If someone says to me, would you like to come to my wedding and I've got a gig booked, I'll have to say no, sorry. One year, Mum and Greg had a job in India and uh, over Christmas time. And I didn't have a Christmas at Christmas time, so I had a Christmas in January and said, Brad is so tuned in to the way we are that he'll get up in the morning and he'll get himself dressed and he'll make himself breakfast and he'll just tap the door and say, Mom, I'm off to school now. And I jump to the window and I wave him off until he's gone around the corner and I get back into bed. America itself, to me, I see Botox women up to the nines with false bits on their bodies, <laughs> um, hair extensions, manicures. Louder than us, more brash than us. Confident, overpowering. Very confident, yeah. I'm expecting it to be quite, I don't know, quite rough in places. They may think the US is full of rough, loud people with fake boobs, but the Stevensons head to Chicago anyway, whilst the Owens head for Brown. Here we 
are. We're in Birmingham. The adventure of a lifetime. Now, son, I want you to do me a big favor. I want you to watch everything. Pay attention to every little detail. The way the air smells, the way the people talk, the way they walk, and the way they act. That's gonna give us another look at life. We can see things through someone else's eye. Uh -huh. Look at here. Oh. Arriving at their home for the next seven days, the Owens soon discover the Stevenson's penchant for dressing up. While Othell gets his freak on, the Stevensons are driving through Chicago en route to the Owens' home. But as they enter the Owens neighborhood, their journey is brought to an abrupt halt by a real-life Secret Service agent. Excuse me? So secret his face can't be shown. Is it okay to come in? We're, we're new to the area, we're just coming up, come on holiday and uh, what, what's going on? Is it, should we, we be alarmed or anything? No, no, you shouldn't be alarmed. But... All the roads are blocked off. Yeah. Do you know why? Yeah. Oh, why? Why? Y'all can go ahead and go. It's good. What? They're not going to tell us. You're not going to tell us? But there's been no accident or anything? No. It's safe? It's your... OK. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Gosh, it's a bit strange. Let's get no, back in the car. No, no, no. Leaving the scene none the wiser, the Stevensons press on to the Owen family's three bedroom home. Come on. Where the neighbours have laid on a little welcome party. Oh my God! Oh. All right, all right. Hi, everyone. Hi, yeah, nice to meet you. Good to see you. Nice John, great. Nice to meet you. We found ourselves living in a, you know, black community. Although we live in Birmingham and there's a big black community in Birmingham, we've never actually lived in one, so it's going to be a great experience. That's great. It's yeah. a total immersion in and a different culture. And the people culture. are Brilliant. amazing. While they wait for their obligatory Chicago dogs to cook, the Stevensons tried to get to the bottom of the mystery roadblock. And then we saw all the policemen around everywhere. Oh, that's because the president is in town too. Oh, yeah. right. The president lives uh, close over here. He, I live around the corner from him, so there's a lot of security. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. The president. Before he upsized to the White House, Barack Obama lived just down the road in a house he still uses whenever he's in town. Living next door to Barack Obama. It's amazing. <laughs> While they're staying in Birmingham, the Owen family will be managing the Stevenson's 1980s theatre company and auditioning talent for a new show. But first, they're the guests of honour at a welcome party of their own. I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't expect this. The energy, the excitement. And it's for, it's for us? That's huge. That's, that's really huge. <sighs> and there's even better to come. These Brummies may not have a president living in their neighborhood, but they can boast a bloke with a massive hat. Welcome to Germany. Welcome. I hope that you'll find us, the Birmingham people, as friendly as I know they are. Everything has been beyond my wildest dreams. The friendship, okay. the kindness, and the sentiments that have been shown to my family uh -huh. from this fair city yeah. is overwhelming. We are pleasured and honored to be here with all of you. My husband is always emotional when he's happy, and he, he'll cry. You know, he's <laughs> very expressive like that. Would you like to feel my bling? <laughs> Top dog, if you will, of the city. Bringing us greetings and welcomes, it doesn't get any better than that. Wow! 
I'm stoked. I'm, I, I don't know how much more I can handle. The Owen family from Chicago are in Birmingham, living the lives of the Stevenson family who run their own theater company. This morning, it's down to the Americans to audition talent for an upcoming production of Cinderella. Very nice. Very nice. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. She had good stage presence. Um, her moves were real fluid. Uh, great execution of the whole. Yeah, she popped. And she, she's the one that stood yeah. out to me when they were together as a group. She popped. Too, so. Yeah, I was looking at her. Yeah, I kind of. So now you see the difference. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. The babes are cute. They're fine. They're gorgeous. However, it's hard for me to say, as cute as you are, you're not the right babe for the part. That's an oxymoron in my world. What cute babe wouldn't be right for any part? Back in Chicago, Ethel Jr. works as a child actor, so he and his family know all about castings. I think it gives him a greater understanding now of what happens, that you kind of have to, you know, you see people are talented, everybody has their strengths, but you have to boil it down to the person that just fits that, you know, fits the role, and I think this is really gonna help him understand, actually, his craft a little better. I'm so charming. It's alarming how charming I feel, for I'm loved by a pretty, Wonderful boy! <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Bye. Wow. Look at that. Okay, I'm going Sorry. <laughs> I got to give him a lot of courage, a lot of hoosa for even, you know, attempting to do that. Um, it was incredible. He's definitely not a singer. I just can't imagine doing this all day long. I'd shoot myself. <laughs> you know, I've stepped into the life of some professionals, and they're counting on me to make the best decision for this production. So this, this, is, this is tough. This is tough. You're all brilliant. However, some of you just don't have what we're looking for. Abigail, Nicholas, and Chloe wish you the best. Have a good day. Thank you. All right. It's kind of sad to see people that didn't get it, but this experience will make me more confident at an audition. So if I don't get it, I don't get it. I'm not what they're looking for. In Chicago, Othello Inn has links with many projects aimed at helping the local community. While he's living in Othell's shoes, Greg Stevenson from Birmingham has a chance to experience one of these firsthand and has come to the North Lawndale area of Chicago to learn more. Why is the unemployment rate so high in North Lawndale? Go on there. Yeah. It's because there's a very high, high rate of people who have been formerly incarcerated. Oh. So do you work or live around communities that have high rates of incarceration? No. Or is that an issue anymore? Not, not particularly. Um, well, I suppose Birmingham does as it have its um, communities like this, not particularly twin with, with religion, if you know what I mean. Yes, no. I know what you mean. Sweet Beginnings is an innovative scheme designed to get ex-offenders back to work, alongside some small but very industrious colleagues. These former criminals care for a colony of urban bees, producing honey and cosmetics that are sold around the city. The program is some is something that's productive for us. You know, it's something different. When I was released from prison, I just made a decision that I want to do something different. That's good. Something That's other great. than what I used to do. So what did you used to do? Uh, I used to commit a lot of crime. I used did to you? sell drugs. Yeah. You know? So at this point in my life, I'm just trying to do something different, something constructive, something positive. That's great. Uh, I've been coming in and out of jail since I was 16. Yeah. And I'm 39 now. So I've, I've, given, the, I've given away a lot of my life to yeah, the streets. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I got kids. I got a 24-year-old son, a 17-year-old daughter, and a 14-year-old daughter. So you've missed a lot of their life, really, missed through a lot crime, of their yeah. Lives, right. And you know, actually, this last incarceration I did with my son. So yeah. you gotta imagine how that feels. Yeah. To wake up yeah. one morning and look at the next bunk and see your child. Yeah. So that's when I made a decision I was gonna do something different. Well, you don't wanna keep passing it on, do you? Exactly. Yeah. This resource center uh, works with people that uh, are um, ex-offenders. And I, I didn't quite know how I felt about that. I mean, everyone's made a mistake in their life, you know. It just happens that these people probably got caught for it. Um, uh, so, you know, they're not all bad, are they? They're just normal guys, and they want to make a change, and they're looking forward and not back. I've been in prison four times. 
and I just somewhere along that line I just lost hope. You know, yeah. I never I never been employed. Never been employed. You no, know, this is my first real job. That's crazy. You know, so and I feel good about myself. Yeah. I feel like a citizen, yeah. you know. It's I feel good. like a citizen. This program helped me a lot. That's great. You know, it, it uh I learned a lot about yeah. myself. So it's it's a really good place then. It's really good to yeah, it's, it's a great watch that be, yeah. Let's watch that be. Oh, <laughs> he likes you. Yeah, he just, he just <laughs> that was close. Yeah. <laughs> you lost your cool there for a minute. <laughs> they say don't move. Oh, oh. You got him. You all right? Yeah. This shows that a lot of people give back to the community that they live in, and Vicky and myself don't particularly give back to the community that we live in. Uh, I mean, perhaps we should. Perhaps we need to think about something like that. Meanwhile, back in Birmingham, hard-working mum Maria Owen has for once got some time on her hands. So she's taking them to a nail bar for a spot of TLC. I know there's got to be work because I haven't had any pampering in a long, 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 long time. And why is that? Family, kids, life? Life and <laughs> family and um, uh -huh. right. Mom yeah. has been ill for the last couple of years and take care of my grandmother and my Dad is ill, and my father-in-law is, is ill, so mm -hmm. that along with an eight-year-old little boy who oh, wow. has a budding acting career is a really? full-time job. <laughs> you really have got your hands full, haven't you? Yes, ma'am. She's just a really nice, warm, genuine woman. You don't really meet that many genuine people, you know? You meet a few, and when you do, you, you know, you give back. It's very, very important that you take care of yourself. Find time for you. That's, that's something new that I will have to um, try to incorporate into yeah. the plan. But mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's kind of a little foreign to me because I'm so used to taking care of my yes. family and yes. you know extended family and friends. Well, look at it another way. Okay. If you're not fit and healthy, then you can't look after your family. Right. And if you don't take care of yourself, you can't do that. Right. So you have to take <laughs> care of yourself. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna have to learn to take that advice. I have some major lessons to learn, and I'm gonna try to incorporate them on my uh, trip back home. Unsurprisingly, Maria has a close-knit group of friends back in Chicago. Eager to learn more about the British way of life, they've invited career-driven Brummie Vicky Stevenson to one of their regular girls' nights in. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Before I came to Chicago, my perception of people we're, we're going to be mainly Botox, nose jobs, cosmetic surgery, perfect boobs, bum lifts. But I've got to say, I've been proven wrong. In Chicago, it's not like that at all. In fact, I feel like the blonde bimbo. That has to be your perception of America. Yeah. Like you guys have like Jerry Springer and I don't around watch the TV, world. I don't read newspapers, and I don't watch the news. What do you do? I work. You work? <laughs> I like that. I so work. what do you do for fun? Work. So, like, if you work so much, how much time do you get to spend with your son? When Brad's at school, we'll go out to work. Mm -hmm. When he comes home from school, we're not there. OK. Who's there with him? Babysitter. OK. Unless we have a tour, and then it's, like, two weeks at a time. And then on a Sunday, it's always a day of family. I was really surprised when Vicky was talking about not being able to spend time with her son. I'm not judging or anything, but it's just a bit odd. To me, that a mother only spend time with her son one day a week. Describe Maria's life. <laughs> She's very fortunate. She can spend time with um, Junior Othal. Mm -hmm. And she can entertain guests when she feels like mm -hmm. it. A hangout house. Yeah. yeah, that's where we all go. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's really nice. I've always thought in the back of my mind, in an ideal world, I'd love to be a housewife. I'm fed up of juggling that with that, trying to find a babysitter, trying to do... It'd be so nice to just wake up in the morning and think everything's sorted and I'm going to deal with Bradley, the washing, the ironing, and just the day-to-day -day running of the house. Thanks, girls. Bye-bye! <laughs> Ethel Owen came to Birmingham determined to absorb as much English culture as possible. And culture doesn't get much more English than the sound of leather on willow. Today we're going to teach you about the quintessential English game of cricket. OK, OK. So uh, hopefully have some fun and realise that, you know, it's a bit different from baseball. I've watched a little bit on TV and it Good. looks uh, interesting and I'm, uh, I'm willing to learn. Local cricketers Gavin and Stewart will begin by giving the American an all-important lesson in ball control. 
the first and most important piece of equipment, the box. The box. When you're facing someone that can hit you at 90 miles an hour in the uh, private regions, you need this. I hope it's big enough for you. It's English size. <laughs> Make it look easy. The considerate twins still seem to be concerned about Othell's crown jewels, so begin with some gentle underarms. Just keep watching that ball. Yeah. Yes! Jeez. Let's run it up now. And back again, that's another four. <laughs> you taking it, something? It's a little bit awkward, but it's exciting. I'm finding a tad bit of a challenge. I'm not used to holding a piece of wood in that manner. Now they're going to get into a a little more of a real life situation here. He's going through it from way out there. Yeah, he's just going to get a little bit of pace up. We stepped up a little bit. OK. Go on in, Gab. Oh. Great right shot. Yes. That's a four. Come on, Gab. What are you doing? Knock him over. Right, that's it. I can't have a yank getting away with it. Yeah, I know you're coming with it now. I know. I'm coming for you, baby. I know you are. Come on with it. Oh, yes! Well hit! Gaff! Gaff! Boom! Hey! is not Bob straight one yet? I'm really getting into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I want to go back and show the boys how it's done. <laughs> Fair play. He showed some bottle. Didn't get him out, so applaud it's to him. I'm <laughs> disgusted. <laughs> It's been a humbling experience for the Brits, and their misery is only brought to an end when the American novice picks up an injury. Got a little war injury there. Uh, that was pretty nasty. It's part of the game. It's part of the sport. So now I feel uh, official. That's how we do it. We do it outside. Outside. Yeah. outside of the track. That's outside. That's how we yeah. do it. Yeah. Right I can yeah. go back to Chicago and have my buds over, and we can watch the game, and I can be a bit of a show off and tell them about the game and how the game is played, and maybe who knows encourage them to play. So you bust my cherry. I was a virgin, not anymore. <laughs> you broke me in proper. That's it. In Birmingham, Othell Owen from Chicago is about to get his first experience of the NHS. He injured his thumb playing cricket yesterday, so he's en route to the Good Hope Hospital to see if it's life-threatening. I don't know a lot about the medical system here, but back home, you pay for it. If you have insurance, you're fortunate. Insurance costs a lot, you pay for it. And if you don't have insurance, then you're in big trouble. If I were back home right now, injured myself and didn't have insurance, I would more likely not go to seek out medical treatment just because of the fact that I, I know I can't pay for it. I know I'll be all day. I don't think it's broken. Can you bend it fully? No. So it's what we'll do is we'll do an x-ray and make sure you that you've got no fracture there, yeah. Can you come with me? Sure. It's always a pleasure to follow a pretty lady. <laughs> Moments later, the silver-tongued American is lighting up the x-ray department. Hi, how are you? Not too bad. OK. You're quite a pretty lady, I must say. Is, is that OK to say that? Oh, it's all right. <laughs> You all girls are just so beautiful. My goodness. Yes, yes, yes. As I'm looking around the x-ray room, I noticed these things called uh, gonad shields. And hadn't seen those stateside. Maybe there's a reason why I haven't seen them. But as I read further on, they protect the, the gonads doing the x-ray. So that's interesting. I'll keep that in mind when I get back. That part right there. OK, yeah, I see. So it's broken. Yep. It's OK. Try the other time. Why? That's, That's it. That's it. That's I mean, you can, you're free to go. I'm light, easy, and breezy. I'm free to go, huh? Yeah. The experience has been wonderful. This healthcare system is wonderful. It has a lot, and maybe we over in America could emulate how things are done here. Where are you from? Chicago. Oh, right. Yes, okay. and, I'm, and I'm here visiting. Yeah. And unfortunately, I had a nasty little injury playing cricket yesterday. Oh. And the healthcare here has been phenomenal. To, right? Yeah. They're the best in the world. So thank good. you so much. No problem. Take care. Good day now. Bye. Bye. And there you have it. All women like me. Young, old, doesn't matter. All women like me. <laughs> While Othell's winning hearts and minds at the hospital, his son is doing much the same at another British institution. For child actor Othell Jr., a UK classroom offers an ideal opportunity to practice his received pronunciation. 
Right, who thinks they've got an interesting phrase they can come and help teach Othell to say in our English accent? Uh, come on then, Brad. I like chips and fish also. also. I like chips and fish also. He's really confident and I, I couldn't be that brave. Having mastered the English accent, Othell Jr. sets his sights on the national game and his mum, Maria, is cheering him on. The eight-year-old has played soccer back in Chicago, but his touch is a little rusty. I'm not as good as you guys, but... My friend used to have an afro. Yeah, because, well, James, didn't he? James <laughs> Labour used afro. to have an afro. Yeah, mine's... He's mature for his age. He's used to being around adults all the time. So it's really, really good right now to see him out there just relaxing and having fun and playing with the other kids. I, I love it. Right then, how many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five aside. Bonner. Fell. Fell. As the teams are being picked, Chicago's answer to Freddie Flintoff makes his heroic return from hospital. I broke my thumb. You broke it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Well, when you're an authentic cricket player, <laughs> you get hurt, okay? <laughs> How's he doing? Oh, he's doing excellent. Look at our little boy. He's having a time of his life. <laughs> he's growing right before my very eyes, and this trip has done so much for him. Play brilliantly. Well done. I was a little disappointed that I didn't get one on my own, but I still did score in another way. And for you to come and play with us, it's been an honour for us, and you've done really, really well. You tried your hardest, and that's what we asked for. <laughs> so, you now get one of these Wilnicott Wanderers medals, because you've come and played with us. Thank you. Hey? Thank you. Well done, mate. You've been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well done. In Chicago, the Stevenson family have taken a leap out of the Owens book and rather than constantly working, are actually being a family for a change. Brad can wash up. <laughs> Their day begins with a shift at a friend of Othell's pizzeria. This is like the generation game. Where all they need to think about is a new Birmingham-themed pizza recipe. Look at that, Brad. Are you proud of that? Yeah. That's our uh, That's amazing. full English breakfast pizza. Look at that. Wow. Little pattern in the middle. Next on the itinerary, a guided tour of the city's spectacular architecture. Now, the name Chicago is the French derivation of a Native American word meaning stinky onion swamp. Now we're here, it's, it's quality time. Yeah, which is quite We're nice. relaxing, aren't we? Yeah, we are actually relaxing. Are you relaxing? Yeah. I'm gonna break them all. Is it nice spending time with us? A lot of nice, yeah. yeah. Oh boy, we got a big one on the right, folks. That is the Sears Tower. Because we're spending more quality time with Brad, like I didn't know that Brad knew that the biggest skyscraper was in Dubai. You know, you know, that, and he just came out with that. I'm like, wow, he's great at school. <laughs> but it's really nice that he interacts with us about things and, and historical events and, you know, architecture and uh, places of interest. He knows quite a lot of stuff. Proud of you. 311 South Wacker, the architect's paying tribute. It's virtually impossible to, to compare. Um, Chicago with Birmingham because Birmingham have got a few big buildings here and there a few nice hotels but to go on that tour that we've just been on it really outlines the complete difference between the two cities mm. this is magnificent back in the UK Othell and Maria are being treated to a Birmingham tradition Two of the Stevenson's colleagues from the theatre company have brought them to the legendary Balti Belt, home to over 50 curry houses. But before they get stuck in, Othell asks that they observe a tradition of his own. Well, ma'am, ma make a request? Yes. Can we all hold hands, please? Yes. Can we, can we do this? Let us bow our heads. Yep. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to be here with new friends on a new adventure. Grace isn't thank something that I've done since I was at school, and it's made me sort of 
when he asked if we could all hold hands, I was a bit like, oh my God, this is weird. Thank you for the opportunity to grow and to learn. In his name, we say amen. Amen. Thank you all. Not coming from a mega religious background, it's not something that we do, you know, on a Sunday lunch, is sit around the table and say grace. But yeah, it was really nice, really nice. Ooh. It's good, but it's very spicy. <clears throat> it's too spicy for you? It's good, though. I'm very glad that we're here. If I had come on my own, I wouldn't have found this place. I wouldn't have even made it to this part of town. So this has been uh, big ups for me, big ups. Is it weird stepping into an, an, like a highly populized Asian community in comparison to what it's like in Chicago? As a, as a black man you know, in Chicago, when I go about, I am always curious to how I will be treated. Yeah. You know, I have this internal radar. You know, is the food going to be laid? Are they going to delay my order? Is they going to feed everyone else before they serve me? Because you're black. Because I'm black. That still well, goes on. Unfortunately. Yeah, it does. And yeah. I got to tell you, since I've been here, I didn't know that I'm black. No. And I'm treated as a man as opposed to as a black man. And it feels good. Yeah. The whole time we've been here in Birmingham, we've seen so many different types of cultures, but everybody blends in, even though there might be in different neighborhoods or whatever, but everybody seems to fit really well. It's bringing out so many emotions mm. that uh, my son would actually be in a world where he is not judged by his color, but the content of his character. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what it boils down to, yeah. You know, to be out of that fishbowl into another fishbowl is, is quite refreshing, and I, I drink to that. Yeah, yeah. And I agree. He keeps getting really emotional when we're talking about how welcoming we all are over here. And to me, it sort of seems odd that he feels segregated in his own mind um, when we sort of welcome people with open, open arms over here. I mean, I'm waiting for that moment, you know, okay? I know it's coming. Wait for it, wait for it. Where is it? And it's, it's not here. My husband is a very emotional man, and he feels real deeply about a lot of things. And I guess he's learned a lot about himself. And it's a wonderful experience for my child to see, because right now, he sees the world colorless. And I want him to continue to see life that way. And this, this has been a wonderful experience for all of us to, um, you know, to kind of come here and see things outside of our little box. So in my own self-discovery, you know, Maybe it's, it's my prejudice. I'm growing. I'm being exposed to a much bigger part of the world, and that the part of the world that I know is just quite small. The Catholic faith plays an important role in the lives of the Owen family from Chicago. In an attempt to understand why, the agnostic Stevensons from Birmingham are attending mass at the Owen's local church. Every time we go to churches, funerals, weddings, Diggs, yes. funerals, weddings. Oh, and christenings. We're not particularly Brad's religious. not even christened. I think we might get it done today. You might get it done today. Oh, no. <laughs> I need to, I need to see something to make me believe. And if I get touched today, I'll come out and say I've been touched by the Lord. That's great. But I've never seen Jesus. Vicky shouldn't feel too hard done by. Jesus Christ doesn't often do personal appearances, but in this church, at least, he's still packing them in. There's a prayer for Father's Day. Uh-oh. Oh, no. We arrived, and they give you the, uh, the leaflet, and I had to look through, and suddenly I saw a prayer which was dedicated to fathers, lost fathers that have passed, and it just, just got me. I didn't think for one minute that I would cry about my dad. Because you think you're over things, but it was the, it was the prayer. Now, the Lord hasn't touched me, but I think that the fact that I'm still grieving for my father did. The singing and the atmosphere, the community spirit in here, it's amazing, and you just have to get into it. Back in the UK, you know, you come in, you have the service, which is quite dreary, and then you leave. But here, it's so community-driven. And after the service, you sit around and, uh, and have a chat and get to know each other. Church is definitely better over here. A lot better. Better over here than in the UK, definitely. 
The Owen family came to Birmingham determined to soak up as much culture as possible. Today, they're visiting nearby Tamworth Castle, where the staff immediately make Othell Senior feel very welcome. Things that were thrown at them when they were in these stocks, down urine and poop thrown at them. Could you imagine it all yeah. dripping off your face? Wow! Look at this! Look at that view! Oh, wow. This is new to me. I believe this might yeah. be the first castle I've ever been in beside Disneyland, but uh, this is my first real castle. Would you like a Norman helmet to put on you, top? You bet I would. Yeah. There we go. And we're very careful. I feel like I am the power! <laughs> All I now need is a horse, huh? It's nice to see him have fun and wear the costume. When he wears the costume, he gets in a character. May I try the other helmet on? My dad likes Thundercat, Team Adventures, Star Trek. He's a little bit of a big kid. Wow. This has got some weight to it. On this day forth, my lady, wow. I solemnly pledge my life to thee to protect, to honor, and to serve, if you'll have me. I indeed do. Thank you. Okay, we'll have All to right. find our, some more souvenirs. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Man, I wish I could have kept that. I know, that yeah. Sport plays a big part in the cultural identity of both Birmingham and Chicago. Over in the Windy City, young Brad Stevenson is learning the finer points of a sport for which Chicago is famed. First, the fake. You gonna get that fake, come all the way up. Yep. And then you move. Let me see you do that one on. You come all the way up. All the way over your head. There, there you go. go. Yep. There you go. Right on, right on. All right, Brad, get ready. Hands ready. Back home, ready. his parents' busy work schedules mean Brad go, can't Brad. always count on their support at his sporting endeavors. I think my mum would like to spend more time with me, but, but she really can't because the work is, like, 24-7, so... But Vicky's not working this week, so she's finally getting a chance to see Brad in action. It's a privilege, actually, that I'm here because sometimes on a Saturday when he's actually playing football practice, I've just got back from a gig, so I can't always make it. He's doing really well by the looks of it, Bless. Yeah. Vicky's not seen anything yet. Brad is about to unleash his new signature move. Let me see the fake. as I am always, but yeah, that was really good that he got in there and really got in and had a go and... Yeah, he looked like he was a bit of a natural, if I say so myself. Because you did such a good job today, all right? Coach uh, Woods and I wanted to give you a, a, a game ball and say thanks for coming out and playing with us and, uh, you know, hope you will pick it up as a sport. My, my experience here in Chicago has made me actually think, do you know what, I'd love six months off and just do full-time mum and that's it. It's the Stevenson's last evening in Chicago, so they're taking one final family outing to the top of America's tallest building, the Willis Tower. We wanted to come to Chicago on this opportunity, uh, mainly, in, in my mind, to bring Brad uh, to America, because it's, it's, it's OK sitting at home reading about America, but there's nothing better than coming here and, and seeing it for yourself. I didn't think it was going to be as pretty as it is. It's really nice. And then we got you know, uh, submerged in an African-American community. Uh, the people are great. Brad's growing up from... He's, he's going from a boy to a man. And I've, I'm, I've been finding that quite difficult working at the same time. But this week, I have got to know him more. Yeah, I've enjoyed spending a lot more time with Mum this week. 
like because we, we never really get to do it at home because it's always like working quite a lot i think with everybody family is important you know um my family greg me and brad as a unit that's that's all i live for and that's why i have to work i mean we do spend a lot of time together but it's always not quality time i think you know, my, I love my job and it's my passion, but at the end of the day, the family unit has to be a successful and happy one. For the Owens' final evening in Birmingham, the Stevenson's Theatre Company are throwing a leaving party in their honour, and they've got two school uniforms going spare. I'm normally a giver, and this trip has taught me how to receive. It's um, allowed me to slow down. Uh, my husband says he thinks he found his old wife back again because I've been able to, you know, let my hair down and relax and laugh. We are living in a material world, and I am a material girl. Now I just need to make sure that when I go home that I take this back with me, that I find some kind of way to have some me time and uh, so that I can be good to myself and also be even better to my family. Next, it's Othell's turn to murder a classic from the 80s. stage presence was amazing. It was like he'd been on stage all his life. He just went mental, absolutely crazy. The old arms, he was going for it. <laughs> Every time I think of you, I know we had to meet. And I just can't get enough. And I just can't get enough. What a rush. What an adrenaline rush. I mean, I was nervous going out. Once the music started, the fans are there, people are waving and making noise. And wow! Wow! I just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. I just I couldn't have fathomed in my wildest dreams that it would be like this. This has been a phenomenal, life-changing experience. We are not the same people that we were when we got off that plane. We can't be, and we won't be. This trip has been amazing. I've learned an English accent. I've learned a little bit more about my family and myself, and I just really, really want to come back soon. It feels like I'm already at home. My home, away from home. And for all of these folks that I've met to be put in the category of friend, says a whole lot. 